Nicola Sturgeon is going to resign as First Minister of Scotland. Now, when a political leader resigns, normally other politicians, they'll come out and say, well, they might have disagreed with a person on this issue and that issue. They maybe thought that they were incompetent in one area or another, but that's run-of-the-mill politics. But you still wish them well, because they were well-meaning, even though we might have disagreed. They were trying to do the best uh, for the country. And so we thank them for their efforts. Right, can I say that of Nicola Sturgeon? Well, maybe to some degree, but there's more that needs to be said because with Nicola Sturgeon, a lot of the issues that are relevant are not run-of-the-mill political issues. They are absolutely core moral issues. For example, under Nicola Sturgeon, the Scottish government has corrupted and sexualised children through their sex, sexuality and gender education in schools, presenting changing gender as a normal, natural and healthy option, leading them down the road and then providing so-called health services to damage them further. They're looking at introducing a law that will prevent people from saying to children, changing gender, do you really think that's a good idea? Can we not just have a think about this? That would be illegal. And alongside that, Nicola Sturgeon in her speech today, she called for a more rational debate around these issues, a more rationalist debate. This is the same Nicola Sturgeon who very recently was claiming that rapist was a gender. Now, the Scottish government has come between children and families, wants to turn children's loyalty towards the state and away from their parents. That is just wrong. Undermining parents is wrong. Nicola Sturgeon is a female supremacist, which in my view is about as respectable view as being a white supremacist. And then to cap it all, Nicola Sturgeon has expressed joy in the killing of unborn children. I haven't worked out the figures precisely, but it would be roughly 100,000 unborn children killed during Nicola Sturgeon's time as First Minister of Scotland, killed by government agencies, according to the policy of the Scottish government. So as well as retiring, I would urge Nicola Sturgeon, with regard to these issues, to also think about uh, repenting. But there's no sign of that, because Nicola Sturgeon normally shows a sort of angry contempt for her opponents. During her speech today, she complained that political debate was often brutal. But she's pretty harsh in the comments she makes about her opponents as well, quite personal comments in many uh, cases. She talks about needing to depolarize debate, but the debate is polarized. People have very, very different opinions. I mean, from my point of view, I'd say my uh, opinions about a lot of social issues haven't really changed uh, in decades, but the, uh, the other side has just gone further and further and further away, which has produced polarization. So if Nicola Sturgeon wants to depolarise, I suggest maybe they, uh, they come in a bit from the extremes that they've gone to. Now, with Nicola Sturgeon standing down, will the SNP change? There's no reason to think it will. And his policies with regard to the things I've just mentioned, they're similar to the other parties in most regards as well. Now, Nicola Sturgeon today mentioned a few other areas of policy, areas where she thought you know, she uh, had a good record, things she was proud of. I'll start off by saying something that was completely absent from what she was saying. The economy. She had nothing to say about creating jobs, creating wealth, the state of the public finances, because I think that's just not on their agenda. They're not interested in that uh, at all. Doesn't even register. Spending the money is their speciality. Where it comes from, they just don't seem to be interested. Uh, the attainment gap. The fact that pupils in wealthier areas get better exam results than pupils in poorer areas. The SNP has made that a top priority, uh, but they've basically got nowhere trying to solve this alleged problem. It isn't actually a problem. It's just academic ability isn't evenly distributed among groups. But what they have been able to do, and Nicholas Sturgeon was very proud about that, was to have more pupils from poorer schools going to top universities. Because that's easy to do, isn't it? All you need to do is rig the system. Like at Edinburgh University in their law course, it just came out a few weeks ago, there was not a single person got in who wasn't from either a poor area or had been in care, who was a, an asylum seeker or whatever. So in other words, the mainstream Scottish people, no point even applying because there's no place for you. And Nicola Sturgeon regarded that as one of her greatest achievements. She spoke about something she wanted to do in the future. Uh, that was to reform the legal process with regard to sexual assault uh, and rape. Now, I think that's quite concerning because she sees it because she's on the side of women and against men, because that's her idea of uh, feminism. Uh, if you go into a justice system with the idea that you're going to make it favour one group and disfavour another, well, that's obviously not good. There's already problems in this area. I was talking to a lawyer quite recently who deals with defending people accused of sexual assault and rape. And the lawyer said already uh, that justice is undermined by the regulations. For example, 
if a, a bloke has sex with a woman one night and she sends, says it was rape, it was rape. If the, if the man has got a text on his phone the next morning from the same woman saying, do you want to come round to have sex again at my place? The man is not allowed to produce that in evidence in court, which is just seems wrong to me. But so it's already wrong. So justice is already undermined. But Nicola Sturgeon wants it skewing uh, even more. So again, in her little speech today, she talked about giving children the best start in life, by which she means they need to be in nursery, not with mum. Being with mum, one-to-one care with the person who loves them the most, that's not the best start in life. Being in nursery, state childcare, is the best start in life. And that's unchallenged by all the other parties as well. Now, she spoke a bit about her role as the, the chief mammy. She didn't use that term. Uh, to trying to help children who've been in, in care. Yeah, fair enough. I got the impression, though, the reason she mentioned that is she didn't want to go straight into independence. So when people said, what are you going to focus on from now on? She didn't want to say independence is the best thing. She wanted to present something a bit more human um, first, which she did. But then she was on to what was obviously the main topic, which is the Constitution. And I would describe Nicola Sturgeon's attitude uh, to the Constitution as, uh, as constitutional idolatry. Now, that's not to say uh, that you, know, you might agree or disagree with Scottish independence. That's not the point I'm making. But I'm saying if that's the thing that overwhelms all other issues and that's all that matters, then I would describe that as constitutional idolatry. For example, someone who says, I support Scottish independence. OK, I, I know these, the SNP government, they kill unborn children, they corrupt and sexualise um, sexualize children, but we just need to overlook that for now until we've got independence. Well, I would say whatever you're tempted to sacrifice your children to is an idol. But now Nicola Sturgeon's got a bit more time on her hands, I would invite her to debate. I'd love to have a chat with her because I understand her points of view, but she really hasn't got a clue of my points of view, the, the social conservative position. Now, what I've said there, you might be feeling, have I been a bit uncharitable towards Nicola Sturgeon? I would just uh, invite people to consider the fact that Nicola Sturgeon would like to see my wife and I in prison. Uh, my wife goes and stands outside the abortion clinic and takes part in the prayer vigil. Nicola Sturgeon would like to see her in prison for that. Uh, in my role with the Scottish Family Party, I, I often say things like people experiencing gender dysphoria. I would encourage them to seek alignment between their sex and their gender identity rather than seeking a different gender identity. That will be classed as conversion therapy. Again, that could lead to people being sent to prison. So Nicola Sturgeon would like to see my wife and I in prison if we continue doing the things that we're doing now. Now, Nicola Sturgeon is totally committed to the cause of Scottish independence. I'm totally committed to the value of human life, the protection of children and the flourishing of families. Now, Nicola Sturgeon will stand down as First Minister, but she's still got the potential to do a huge amount more harm uh, with her political influence. So what's our response to that? As ever, we campaign, we debate and we enter into the democratic process. So do I wish Nicola Sturgeon well? Uh, politically, no. I hope virtually every project uh, she's involved in, in terms of social issues, moral issues, I hope they all fail. Personally, yes, I do wish her well. I wish her every health and happiness as her moral values are increasingly rejected by the people of Scotland. Okay, thanks for watching. Do join the Scottish Family Party or become a regular donor. We need your support and there's a link below.